Welcome back to How to Build an F-14 Tomcat. Well, for all you guys out there in YouTube world, you now see we've got the fuselage flipped back right side up. Means we're getting a little bit closer. We've got the bottom of the fuselage complete, except for about three panels around the, the beaver tail area, which is down near the, the speed brakes back there between the vertical fins. And I'll show you those panels a little bit later on. If you're at the nose, you notice we got the whole thing pretty much done up, except for around the, the windscreen area. We'll actually we'll have to put another coat of epoxy on here, let it dry, sand it down, then prime paint it and everything. That way we can pull a mold from this area for our vacuum formed canopies. See we got a little bit of primer on the nose cone. The, uh, the new shape works out much better than the, the previous one does. It no longer sits there and just pitches way up on the bottom like it did before. It just kind of flows a little bit better with the, the whole lines of the airplane. Just work our way back slowly. The canopy area here we have it's uh it's now ready for a coat of primer on it as well it's got that second layer of epoxy resin in place a little bit of fine tuning on the sanding on the base of it that way we can get the the gaps really nice and tight before we start molding everything that way it's less finishing work to do see the whole thing is be a pretty big cockpit area just give you a little bit of a that scale if i can find my ruler <laughs> Anyways, there's my hand. <laughs> you can see it pretty much covers the whole thing. So I think this area is about 19 inches long all, to, all together. Good way. Got our upper and lower inlet panels all done. So it's all ready to get molded in place. What we'll do for parting planes is I'll actually, I will mold the front of this. I'll put a parting plane right across the bottom. Go across this whole area. I'll mold the top of the, the fuselage first. Then once we're done with that, I'll put another pair of parting planes right down the center line of the inlet splitter plates the whole way. And then we'll mold the bottom of the fuselage, and then I'll, the last thing I'll mold is the actual inlet itself. That way we can have the whole airplane molded. We can do the inside of the inlets and the out and the exterior of it in a layer of cloth, and then we'll run some carbon tow or some epoxy and milled fiber down there in the groove because this is only about three sixteenths of a quarter inch thick it's pretty narrow and just trying to get cloth down in that tight area just won't work too well we're going to bomb down the side you can see we've got one more panel here i'll probably get those done today keep working down through you see the openings here and there it's actually for the the nav light systems a little odd with these because a couple a lot of my documentation showed a half oval and then some showed this triangle in the the more I got to looking at it, they were actually a half oval to begin with, and then they painted it inside of it and put a, I believe, an aluminum panel to give it kind of this triangular look to it. So a little bit different, weird stuff. Here you can see the area where glove veins would go if the D models actually had it. I may offer an A and a B conversion for those guys who want to do an early model F-14. There's a little, little bit of differences I'll show on the airplane as we go on, but. If you wanted to do glove veins, you could just cut this area out, make them up yourself, and make operating glove veins if you wanted to. Like I said, I won't be doing it because of D model. They're actually all, pretty much all Tomcats had them deactivated on the A models, the B models, and then I believe the Bs and the Ds actually didn't even have them installed. It was just a filler strip like this to fill in the area where they were. Back on the top, we've got one more panel here to do on each side. To actually, it's just a it was a, a cockpit cabin system where it's just an exhaust vent or something there. So we've got that to do. We're going to, you can see a nice little ridge here. This is actually the full hatch. We'll just pop this off on each side. This is actually how you get to your landing gear, your turbine installation, and your wing sweep assembly. Everything's going to be under this one hatch. So you'll basically have the hatch on each side and then the canopy and then the nose cone will be removable and that's all you'll have for access to everything pretty much we'll have a, a few other options to where you can make a scale access panel here to where you could make this removable and you can actually put all your charge jacks and everything down inside here if you needed to you could put air gauges in this vent because it's a it's really pretty open or you could even put stuff back here in the, the air spill door for the inlets here's a lot of options on the airplane to just hide stuff and we actually we mold it this whole a lot of this area here 
won't be there. A lot of this will be a lot smaller than it is. And then the actual pivot box will only be about yay wide. So it'll be a little bit more open than what you see here. We're just putting more mold area for us here so we can make the whole mold a little bit stronger and just keep things pretty general. That way we can, we can adjust things for later on. You can see the steel tube here that we used to keep the plugs nice and straight and center. You can see yet another one there. And there's actually three of these. There's one running down the center line of the entire fuselage and then one down the center line of each nacelle. Going back, see we've got another panel here to do. Yet another one of the fun ones. The other side, you can see the beginning where a NACA duct has to go in. So that wouldn't be interesting. But after one of the ones on the nose, it shouldn't be too difficult. We got the panels here. The vertical tails are basically done, minus a couple of reinforcement strips that'll run up right here that I've got to get some aluminum stock for. Horizontal stabs are, again, mostly done except for the leading edge, which I have to get some longer material to do that in one piece. Then there's some antennas that go right here on both of them. The tail section is, on the fuselage is done, except for the one panel here on both sides. That should be that's a fun one because there's a lot of different curves to it and it's all got to be one piece. And then there's the beaver tail area I was talking about earlier. You see I got to trim some of these panels here, wipe it over the bottom, do it and then the panels, the last three to do are actually, they overlap from the bottom around and then back up to the top on both sides. Then there's a, a fuel dump tube that I have to put here that gets fared into the, the back and the bottom of the beaver tail area. I haven't decided if I'm going to do that whole tube as part of the molding, molding process or if I'm going to leave it as a as an option for the, the actual builder to do where they'll just drill a hole and put a aluminum tube in place. I'll probably just go ahead and mold it in there just to save some work. Up here on the vertical tail you see there's a lot of re just dub boards to stiffen things up. I believe all this stuff was done in the field after a couple hours but the flight time they just noted cracks or something but all this is put in there and it's it's all layered on there really nice so you can you can see how it just builds up but that's where we're at for now i'll try and get another another video up here in the next couple of days maybe i get one this afternoon when i get the rest of the fuselage done with all these other little panels that are just sitting here and there but that's where we're at until next time we will see you in the shop